Hello and welcome to the first RoboHydra screencast. RoboHydra is a tool that helps you when developing and testing clients of any kind of HTTP-based APIs. So what counts as an HTTP-based API or as a client of such API? There are several common examples. One uh, common example would be any kind of client, uh, web-based or desktop-based, of a public API of some kind over the web, uh, like a REST API, um, for example, it could be uh, the Flickr uh, service API, it could be the Opera Link public API and so on. A second example would be a mobile application that uses a server to uh, save high scores or to uh, fetch some data or, or something like that. And a third example would be in a normal web application, if you have a front end that is quite complex and Use the, uses the server mostly as a data store, uh, you could consider that the front end is its own application and you have this kind of client server um, application and you might want to, to test the, the front end as a, as a separate application, so to speak. Um, so how does RoboHydra help you? What does uh, uh, it do exactly? RoboHydra is a web server. Um, it's called RoboHydra uh, because it's composed of uh, many heads and a head is a piece of software that listens in a concrete URL uh, path and it defines the behavior of the server when it receives a request to that URL path. So it makes it really easy to get the responses you want when you want. So it's very easy to uh, reproduce uh, race conditions or reproduce any kind of problem or test scenario or something that is interesting for you when, when you're testing or, wh or when you're developing uh, your client. Uh, and those situations might be uh, very hard or impossible to uh, reproduce with a real server and we will s see an example of that later. So what does an empty RoboHydra look like? We'll see we can use the example, the empty example. So as we see, RoboHydra is listening by default on port 3000. So we can go here, localhost 3000. It, we see that in 3000, it says not found, but we have a web interface, an admin interface here in RoboHydra admin. So if we go to RoboHydra admin, we see the admin interface. In the admin interface, we can see all the heads and all the information about the currently running Hydra. Uh, I said that the RoboHydra was empty, but you always have um, these heads that are part of the admin interface itself. So the admin interface is developed using exactly the same tools that you have available to write your plugins and your custom servers. So let's see what happens here if I detach the head that is serving the static files like the CSS and JavaScript. If we reload, we'll see that we have the application without any static files like CSS and JavaScript, but the rest of the application otherwise is working perfectly. So I can reattach the head and I can go back to actually having CSS. So, um, uh, one small example of one of the many things are, that you can do with RoboHydra would be to define dynamically uh, without writing any code or, or without uh, having to restart the server or anything like that. You could define that from now on a certain path, say slash foo, um, is going to return a certain, um, certain data, for example, true and results will be empty, for example. So we'll create the head and we can see the head here. We can see that there is a head uh, here in slash foo. And if we go to, if we go to um, slash foo, now we will receive uh, the data that we sent with the correct uh, content type application JSON in this case. As we can see, it's exactly the same uh, text that we wrote. But let's see um, a more real example. Um, this uh, website, memegenerator.net, this uh, website with the silly memes and so on, believe it or not, it actually has a developer API. So using this developer API that you can see here, I created an Opera extension. So this Opera extension uh, uses this developer API and allows you to 
uh, create images of all these memes and so on. And while I'm developing this uh, extension, I want to be able to reproduce different uh, situations that are interesting. So let's start the um, that will be in main panel. So uh, let's go now to the RoboHydro arming interface. We see that we have, apart from the arming heads, we have some other heads that are part of, of this plugin. But an interesting thing that, that we have in this plugin is not only we have heads that are always available, but we have tests. These tests are collections of heads that are going to be activated um, uh, all together. So all those heads would define a behavior that is interesting for us when we're testing. Say, for example, we want a certain behavior to reproduce a certain error, for example, that always will always return uh, zero results. So it doesn't matter what we look for. it will never um, receive any results. And we can see here in home that we have the heads belonging to the current test. In this case, it's only one that listens in this path in generators search. So back to the tests. Now we're going to activate the search one result test. Uh, as you can imagine, whatever you try to look for here will always receive one result, always the same result. So uh, the last one is um, pretty interesting. This is a simulation. This is a test of what happens when the server uh, returns a 500 server error. So uh, this is one of those examples that might be really hard to do with the real server, but it's trivial to do with uh, RoboHydra because you control exactly how it behaves. So let's see what happens we try to search for something, uh, the extension doesn't realize that it can't connect to uh, the API server, which is really bad. That is really bad, but now we have <coughs> an easy, reliable way to um, reproduce a problem. So now we can go ahead and fix the issue. In here, in here I'm going to um, set an error flag if the results is null and then if I go to the um, template now I can say that this should only be shown if there is no error and um, I'm going to close this and uh, We can say show here an error message cannot connect to the API server. So we save these files and now we see what happens. Now it actually realizes that it can't connect to the uh, API server. If we try with this one, it now it can tell the difference between not having results and the API server uh, not being available. And that's really interesting because this situation is trivial uh, now with RoboHydra to um, reproduce. So it's really easy to um, figure out when we have fixed the bug and when, when uh, things are working as they should. Because we on demand can reproduce that problem over and over. So uh, another interesting thing is the log that is uh, available. When things go wrong or when we're not sure what we're receiving from the server or what the client is sending to the server, we can just go to uh, robohydra.log and see what happened. So in this last case, we see that uh, here we have the zero results uh, test active. So the uh, server was returning 200. And in here was a request where we have the um, Mutant generator API dead uh, test enabled, so the server was returning 500 with this uh, body. Um, 
So last thing would be to show a bit the code that makes all this happen. So the code, as you can see, is pretty easy. This is the plugin to, um, to have all the tests for the meme generator API. Uh, this is simply uh, data that we're using, simply uh, example results. And then we can see here um, the different tests that we have defined. We define the search empty as always returning this uh, content. We define the search uh, one result as always returning uh, this uh, content. And when we're going to skip this one, and we can see how easy it's to say that all requests, no matter what, that go to any path actually should always return 500 server error with a certain body. So as, as you can see, it's really easy to, to write all these uh, plugins. So that's it for the first uh, screencast. Uh, you have all the information available, the, the website in robohydra.org. You have a, a lot of the documentation, you have a basic tutorial, you have an advanced tutorial, you have uh, interesting use cases and uh, reference documentation all here. And of course you have um, all the source <coughs> in um, on github so uh, that's it for the first screencast and thanks for watching